In this episode, I'm going to show you my competitive Nerf Blaster for 2017. And here it is. This is my competitive Nerf Blaster for 2017. And she goes by the name of Carbon Azair. So to start off, this is based on the Nerf Rapid Strike. So this was originally starting off as a Nerf Rapid Strike, which I've converted to a Rapid Strike SMG hybrid. And I could not be more happier with the end result. This thing looks absolutely incredible. And I can't wait to go over everything now for you. So let's get straight into it, starting up the front and working our way straight to the back. So up the front we've got this awesome, awesome worker muzzle. This is the orange worker muzzle, so you can get these in originally, they came in black. But worker made the orange ones so that no one had to put the orange tips on the front. So you could pick up one of these cool orange ones and rock it on the front without having to worry about not having an orange tip. Which I really like, I really love the colour. It's not orange, it's like this bronzy gold orange which I love and it's still that big orange tip on the front so no one can really pull you up saying dude you haven't got an orange tip because that thing is absolutely massive and then obviously it unscrews at the front so you just unscrew like that and it reels that cool flash hider faux flash hider thing I find it really awesome and it just adds like a cool aesthetic to the blaster giving it that CQB SMG feel really with the big suppressor on the front Moving back, this is where the whole integration or minimization, you could say, really took place. This is the forefront and where everything really happened. So, as you can see, I've still actually got the front of the Rapid Strike here, but you, as you can tell, but as you can see, the two profiles do look very different and I will show you exactly what I did. So, I pretty much, as you can see here, people call these the, like, the shark teeth on the front of the Rapid Strike, so pretty much, came back to where that shark teeth platform ends and that line just there I cut straight up going straight up to the top and then to the battery tray went down and then where this line finished I came up and then these two lines met like this as you can see just came straight up this is where the shark teeth ends if you can tell where that was just came straight up and then went straight down from the battery tray and that met up with that chamfered uh, line that came up from the top from this front grip. And then a lot of work had to be done to get this front rapid strike shell piece to actually fit. So this actually wouldn't fit stock, you've actually got to move a screw port for this to fit. So this screw port on this side originally was not there, I had to cut it out, align everything and epoxy it in place for this to be able to stay in and hold on to something because if this screw port wasn't there this would actually fall out. This screw port is the only thing that holds this front piece on which it does a very good job on. As you can see it's not moving at all because of the bottom shells down here holding it in and it can only move up and down and it can't come out. So that's done an absolutely terrific job of holding that in. Very happy in how I did that. It was actually quite easy. It wasn't hard. It actually sounds harder than it actually is to do but um, for me it was really easy and that's what holds the front two shells on. Then with that out of the way, it was just pretty much shaping up the front. I added an epoxy putty along here and smoothed it out to make it a nice smooth front end, just giving it a better face you could say. Much cleaner looking integration, looks like it was meant to be like that in the first place. And then obviously I did minimize these, had to cut them down to make everything fit, had to do some work on the inside for the cage to fit as well. I will be sure to do an in-depth overview on the internals on this blaster as well, so if you want to recreate this mod and how I did it on the inside, you definitely can and I'll show you how to do that, but that will be an upcoming video. So if I wanted to store something in the front, this will still come off, I can put like LEDs through it, store a 9 volt in there very easily, so it's a cool little compartment to have if I ever needed to do something else to the blaster, I wanted to do something else to the blaster, I've still got that space up the front that I can work with. 
Plus, in my opinion, this looks so much better than the usual. Lob off your front and just glue a flat piece of plastic on the front. It gives it a lot more definition, smooths it out, gives it a bit more character to the blaster so it doesn't look like it was definitely integrated or that was definitely modified. Like, someone could look at this and go, wow, was that like a stock Nerf blaster? That's how it was. Obviously not because you know that it's not, but you know, it just, it makes it look a lot nicer. So now we'll move on to the flat top of the Rapid Strike. So that involves me cutting off the carrying handle on the Rapid Strike because that's pretty ugly and flat top Rapid Strikes always look so damn good. So on the top here, I've got a six millimeter polycarbonate sheet and that's held down with these four machine screws here. Uh, so they're bolts, I mean they're nuts, sorry, actually epoxy puttied into the blaster so I can undo these four screws. The whole top plate will come off and then I can unscrew all these screws on this side and the blaster will separate as usual. Now these are some pretty beefy nut and bolts. These are definitely not gonna strip. If you use the right screwdriver, This these bolts will last this blaster its whole lifetime. They're never gonna strip at all. Gonna stay in there very securely as well. So I definitely wanted to make something for the longevity of the blaster. I didn't want to use some like very small teensy screws that aren't gonna hold it down very well and definitely not have a very good life cycle. So those were the bolts I definitely wanted to use for this build. And then moving back here is my switch plate. This controls pretty much the whole blaster. So this switch on the right is my on off switch. So as you can see, this is in the off position and if I press the rev switch, won't rev, but as soon as I do press that rev switch, the blaster comes to life. And then the switch on the left controls my voltmeter. So reading at 11.4 volts out of my one amp graphene 3S LiPo. Great little voltmeter in there, really nice, tucked away very smoothly. I love the integration. They're very clean, the voltmeter and the switch mountings. Very happy how it turned out. Very easy, uh, didn't take me too much time, but definitely a bit of precision, a bit of patience to make sure everything lined up correctly. Bit of marking out and very happy how it turned out. For all my information is in one place. It looks very clean, it's very tidy as well. Doesn't look like it was just slapped on the side of the blaster. It looks like it's meant to be there. So very happy with that. And then on the top of the blaster as well, I've got this Picatinny rail. I'm not sure how long it is. I actually got a Strife worker rail and just chopped it up and put it on there. So <laughs> that's what's on the top. And then down on the side here as well is the rest of the rail. Just put it on that side of the Rapid Strike rail that is usually there. Just to give it a cool look really. <laughs> Now onto this side of the blaster, as you can see, this is very different to what the Rapid Strike usually looks like. This is a 180 motor cover from the guys over at Blaster Tech. Super happy that they hooked me up with one of these. It's a great 180 motor cover. Definitely recommend go checking them out. I filled in all the holes that are usually there. I'll have a picture of what it used to look like. And it just gives it a better profile, it makes it a lot smoother. Um, it doesn't look bad in any objective at all, but for the style I was going, I definitely did little touches through the blaster to make it look a lot smoother and I did want to get rid of those holes just to make it look a little bit cleaner. So I definitely would recommend picking up a Blaster Tech 180 motor cover, really good. Moving back now, this is probably one of the coolest or like one of the most tackiest things on this blaster and it is the access door charging handle. So in real steel stuff, uh, when you're all out of rounds in your magazine, the gun will have the charging handle pulled back or you need to recharge the, bar, the blaster, the gun, to get another round into the chamber. And I put a little faux charging handle on my blaster because it's pretty cool and it actually helps with getting into your access door. So if I had a jam, I'd just have to get my finger in and kind of pull back the jam door like that, but with this I can just get my index finger, definitely easily pull it back like that, have a look inside, clear my jam out with my fingers, and then get back straight into the game. I made it spring loaded, so that it just springs back forward like that, which is pretty cool. Same mod that I used on Vulture, that was a bit of an old video, so uh, same principle and how I did it, just a little bit different with the trigger. I used a, I think it was a ram, no, uh, a Raider trigger, just cut down a Raider trigger and epoxy puttied on the side, shaped it all and it works really well and it is a very cool little touch you could say to the blaster. So now I'm moving all the way back to the stock, this is pretty much the last 
uh, very big mod that I did to this blaster. And you're probably wondering, where's he storing that very big lipo of his? And it's actually in the back of this stock here. So if when I need to charge my blaster or change the battery out on it and one's running low, look at my voltmeter, say, okay, I've got about nine volts in there, or you don't even want it to get to nine volts. Uh, anything below 9.7, you definitely want to change out your 3S. So just take off this back piece here, revealing my LiPo. And this is a 1 amp Turnergy Graphene LiPo. Just sits in the back here, nice and tucked away. Definitely not crushing it or anything like that. And then switch it back out or charge it up. And then just goes back in like so. All done, very nice and clean in my opinion. So it's definitely a really nice place to store the LiPo, keeps it nice and tucked away, nice and safe in the back here, and I've still kept the retracting and pull out stock of the Rapid Strike for its signature stock, which is quite nice as well. Now onto the little things in the integration, I definitely smoothed out a few things, like I said, with the 180 motor cover, I took out the holes and just made it a whole lot cleaner and smoother. Also filled in those lines that the Rapid Strike usually has on the battery tray. Filled in that bolt on the handle so the handle's a lot smoother and you've got a bit more to grip onto. Uh, at the top here, I filled in the small like, divot points that the Rapid Strike has up here. And then on the handle as well on the other side, I actually had to take out a screw port for all my micro switches and stuff to fit in. So that screw port was about here. Filled that in with epoxy putty and, and then there was another hole on the back of the stock here which I had to fill in to fit my LiPo and it just made it a lot more smoother as well. A lot cleaner, a lot more professional than having just a random hole chill in there. And that's pretty much uh, it for aesthetic and out exterior mods for the blaster. So now let's go over that paint job, which <laughs> I mean, look at that green. Like how nice is that green? I'm sorry, but like just give a moment's appreciation for that green. I find green to be a very underutilized color because people usually associate it with camo and like army stuff and real steel stuff. But when you can get this awesome vibrant green like this and it absolutely definitely still looks like a toy and just looks phenomenal and just gorgeous. So I started off with a black base coat as usual. You want a nice black for your green to go over. So that was a matte black base and then I hit it up with this Duplicolor gorgeous uh, color matched spirited green metallic. Now this is a Mazda color match color. Just went down to super cheap and I saw this gorgeous green and I'm like, yes, I definitely want to make a green blaster. And then for the nice orange stripe, I went over with a burnt orange. Same brand as the green that I used for it. So I just masked it up and sprayed on the orange. And then for the black and silver you see throughout it, that is these two Tamea hand paints that I used. Now you probably can't see it very well, but along the Rapid Strike stripe there's actually a very small silver pinstripe that goes along it. Just a very subtle detail, it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to turn out, but it definitely looks very nice and it's a nice little subtle detail that if you catch it in the right light you can see it and go, wow that's actually pretty cool. So I do like that little touch. I clear coated it with this deep crystal clear coat by Color Spec. It's two pack technology. It's not actual two pack, but it's still very, very shiny. As you can see, it's very glossy and shiny, this blaster. So very happy with that. Didn't turn out quite how I liked the clear coat. As you can see on the front here, there's actually a bit of clouding on the black. That's because I used a matte black hand paint. So I've learned my lesson now, but we all learn from our mistakes, guys. I wasn't unhappy with it. I knew that, okay, I stuffed up, but it still looks really nice. And that to me is a win because if I can still like it with a defect like that in it, this blaster must be pretty cool. So again, like I said, we all learn from our mistakes. I'm not perfect. I'm nowhere near the world's most perfect nerfer. So still very happy with it. Also down the bottom here, I've got a Blaster Tech extended mag release. So for those quick reloads where you want to get that magazine out nice and quick, um, I'm going to be reloading this thing by extending the front, uh, my middle finger here, and then I'll have my front hand rested up the front here. 
I can just quickly take out the magazine like that, quickly depress, and then pull back. Out comes the magazine, and just grab another one out of my pouch, slam it back in, and my hand will go back to the same position it was in. So for a little bit of a reason why I made this blaster for competitive is because it's small, it's nimble, and I've tried to keep it as compact as possible for a rapid strike profile. I know this kind of defeats the point of having a small rapid strike because this, in effect, makes it about the same length. Just, oh no, I think it is exactly the same length in barrel. Imagine this on the front of that rapid strike, so I wanted to cut it down. I did want a cool muzzle on there because why not? It looked cool and just to kind of slim it down a bit, a bit of weight reduction so that it's nice and easy to maneuver around. So that's pretty much why I built this thing, just for a lightweight blaster that I can run around with and be quick on my feet with for competitive and it's going to definitely serve me very well. I'm very excited to get out on the battlefield and try this one out. So now let's go over the internal mods of this blaster. This has a hell load done to its insides. If you thought we were done, no, we've still got the insides to go. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this big list. So up the front here, the flywheel cage. I'll have a photo at the top here of what this thing is running. It has a gold artifact cage with hooligan wheels, 19 30 seconds brass guide, running MTB Hellcat 180 motors. That is a gorgeous looking piece that I took a photo of. I, when I put it all together, I was like, wow, look how far like Nerf flywheeling has come. It looks really cool. And it's just an absolute beast of like a system and like a part up the front. It looks really awesome and super happy with it. Definitely delivering great performance, very accurate as well. Heard mixed opinions about the artifact canted gold cage. Um, like I said, I wanted to try something different. I see the red cage used all the time, so I thought, you know what, let's show that gold cage some love. As well as the hooligan wheels. Never tried hooligan wheels, and I'm very happy with them. They definitely perform very well. I'm finding it to be very accurate. Grouping's are nice and tight. If I can dial a red dot sight in for a flywheel blaster, and that's going to hit where I'm pointing my sight, that's pretty damn accurate. So definitely a wicked system at the front here. Moving back here, I've got a Blaster Tech switch plate. Uh, definitely got a lot of Blaster Tech stuff uh, from Blaster Tech for this build. I'm running a three switch system in this blaster, so when I am pulling the trigger and the pusher mech is going, when it comes back, it'll stop there. It won't just keep on going. It's going to motor brake and stay back so that when I put my next magazine in, I'm not interfering with the pusher arm and I'm not bending it anyway and it's going to break it. Moving up to the pusher arm now, I've got the Worker Extended Pusher Arm and I also am running in the pusher motor a 132 Hyperion motor. People wondering why I'm running the 3S version for FPS, there's actually a rule in the competitive games that I play that you have to be under 10 darts per second. And the 132 motor is a very high torque motor, which is under the 10 dart per second limit. It's getting about 8 to 9 darts per second, so I'm not in that uh, like the conflicting zone where it's like, no, that's about 10 darts per second, you better be careful. Where I could overvolt it and I might be over. It's just below it, so it's the perfect motor. And I find that's the perfect rate of fire as well. Anything more than that is just ridiculous and you're going to be burning through your ammo like no tomorrow. Where I've got very good fire control. I'll just give a quick demonstration. So I'll just do a quick burst. As you can see, single shotting very easily. So now I'm in full auto. And that 22 round worker mag is dead. Definitely dished out a lot of firepower. Um, still hitting below the 10 dart per second limit. Perfect rate of fire for me, just, and very accurate as well. Super, super happy with this build. So that's why I chose that 132 motor for the pusher mag. Uh, definitely a good choice for what I was going to go for. And then all the wiring's done with your usual 18 WG wire. Uh, everything from the voltmeter to these top switches back here. Uh, everything's got Dean's connectors on it. So if I want to take the motor cage out, I can take apart the Dean's connector. And that can be a separate piece. I can work on that. I can split everything apart from each other, which is really cool for when you're taking stuff apart. I'll definitely show that in my very in-depth overview on this blaster. So that's pretty much it for Carbon Azair. Let's take you outside and show you some firing of her.
I hope you liked me going over my competitive blaster for 2017. Um, this is a, definitely going to be a lot of upcoming videos, so definitely stay tuned for a lot of competitive gameplay videos. Very happy to get this thing done before the competitive season goes into effect, and I think this is going to be a very key role in winning a lot of games for our team this year. We won last year, so let's keep that streak going. Hopefully I can give you some awesome gameplay footage. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching, it really does mean a lot to me. If you're going to catch up with me when I'm not making videos, check my Facebook and Instagram links in the description. As always, I'll see you in the next one.